This program was made possible by our generous sponsors. Hello everyone and welcome to another My Sci Science video. I'm Kurt and today we're going to be talking about the science of secrets, cryptography. Believe it or not, you're probably using this science right now to watch this video. If you're viewing this on the internet, you're making use of one of the sciences that is all through our everyday lives. You see, cryptography is the science of sending messages that we only want to be readable by the person on the other side. And here's how scientists think about it. Let's imagine two different people. One of them we'll call Alice, and the other we'll call Bob. Now, Alice wants to send Bob a message, but Alice also knows that somewhere between her and Bob is a third person. We'll call Eve. Alice doesn't want Eve to be able to read her message. So what she does is she takes it and she puts it into a box and locks it with a key. Then she sends the box to Bob. Bob gets it, takes his key, unlocks the box, and then Bob can read the message. But if Eve got to the box in the middle, then Eve couldn't read the message because she didn't have the key. This little transaction, where Alice locks up a message, sends it, and then Bob unlocks it, happens millions of times every second on things we've come to depend on, like the internet, banks, credit cards, all sorts of things use this science. And what that science is about is how to make those boxes and keys better and better. Today, we're going to do an experiment using a pretty simple way of locking up a message, something called a shift cipher. Before we begin, I just want to tell you a couple of terms you're going to want to remember. Anything that's in a message we want to send to somebody, we're going to call the message text. That's the full message, what we want people to be able to read. When we lock up that message using our special key, what's on the other side, that locked up box? That's called ciphertext. And when the person on the other side receives the ciphertext, they can unlock it with a key and it turns back into message text so they can read it. So to make a shift cipher, we're going to need to decide on a letter to represent every letter of the alphabet. So the first thing we're going to do is write out a whole alphabet from A to Z. But in order to make a good shift cipher, we're going to have to be able to go from one end of the alphabet to the other. So let's take our alphabet and curve it around into a circle. We're going to bring A back so it's right next to Z. All right. So this is our cipher wheel. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make a copy of it right inside of the other one. So letters on the outside are going to represent letters on the inside. Let's put a line in between so we know which side is which. The shift in a shift cipher is spinning that inner dial. So we're going to spin it one space, and that's a shift of one. Let's go ahead and encode a word using our cipher wheel. We're going to use the word cipher. So the first letter in the word cipher is a C. So let's take our C over to C on the dial, and we see that it becomes a D. So there's D in our cipher text. I becomes a J. P becomes a Q. H becomes an I. E becomes an F and R becomes an S. DJQIFS is our ciphertext. Now if we want to decode our message, we're going to do the same process in reverse. So we're going to turn our inner dial the other direction by one. Remember, that's our shift. D becomes a C, J becomes an I, Q becomes a P, I becomes an H, F becomes an E, and S becomes an R. Wouldn't you know it? Cipher. We got our old message out. Now this works for any shift number. 
Let's try a shift of seven this time. So we're really going to move our dial to the side. We're going to move it seven places. This time when we do it, we're going to do it faster. So I'm going to do all the letters at once. JPW only is our new text. Now if we do seven to the other side, put JPW only into it, we get Cypher back out. This is how a shift Cypher works. So now what we're going to do is go build one. Now that we've seen how a shift cipher works, we're going to make a tool so we can make one of our own. So in order to do this, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a brass fastener, it's one of those little brass things with the wings that you can use to join paper together, and you're going to need a printable cipher wheel. Now, once you've cut out the wheels, two different ones on the thick lines on the outside, you're going to take your brass fastener and put it through the middle of each on the big dot. Once it's through, you can fold down the arms and you're going to have a cipher wheel that spins. Now, just like we saw in the video, you're going to be able to line up your letters to write a message. Start with the letters lined up. So A is lined up with A, D is lined up with D, and so on. Now, if we wanted to have a shift of two, what I would do is move my inner wheel two spaces to the side. So now I can write my message. Say I wanted to the, write the word hello. Well, I'd go to the first letter, H. H becomes a J. So I'd write down J. Then the next one is E. E becomes a G. So I'd write down G and so on and so on. When you want to decode the message, well, remember, line up your letters again, and this time, remember, our shift was two, so we're gonna go two slots the other direction. So now, let's see, our first letter was J, that becomes an H, our second was G, that becomes an E, then we have two, um, hmm, two Ns, they become LL, and finally, a Q, that becomes O. And there we go. We have hello. We've managed to lock up our original word using our key, our shift of two. And then we managed to unlock it by using our key in reverse. This shift cipher has been around for thousands of years. In fact, sometimes you might hear it called a Caesar cipher because it was used in ancient Rome. This is one of the most simple ciphers, one of the most simple ways of locking up information that you can think of. Over the years, people have come up with more and more complicated ways to lock up our information, making stronger and stronger boxes. And so, we have computers that make our ciphers, they make ciphers that are very long and complicated, and it all serves to keep our information secure. And it's how we send secret messages across the world to each other. I hope you had a good time today, and make sure that you go and write a few secret messages, either to your friends or maybe some family. Have fun with it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out our MySci channel, for more MySci science videos and some really cool stuff from the MySci archives. Until next time, remember that science is all around us. Look forward to seeing you next time.